Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. We now come to the end of 2 Peter, and in fact, the end of Peter's writings, as far as we know, of the things that he wrote on earth before he was executed by the Emperor Nero. Now, as I approach this text this morning, I want to remind you that this is, a, in a way of speaking, uh, Peter's last will and testament. He's a much older man. He's not the impulsive fisherman that first met Jesus some 30-plus years earlier. He's a senior leader in the body of Christ, perhaps the preeminent leading leader uh, at this time in the body of Christ. He's in Rome awaiting um, uh, his ultimate execution by Nero. And so for anyone, their last words carry more weight and more importance than just a casual conversation. In the case of Peter, the great apostle, he was one of the original 12. He was one of Christ's most intimate confidants. He was a leader in the early church, and his words are timeless. And so give special attention to this last chapter of Peter's writings, and in a way, the last chapter of Peter's life. Second Peter chapter 3. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to hold some thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also, the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with His promise, we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all of his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard, so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Interestingly, Peter reveals his purpose in writing right out of the gate. He says, I have written both of these letters as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. 
Now, what an interesting expression. He wants to stimulate God's people to hold some thinking. And then from that point, he launches into what we should be thinking about. He says, I want you to recall the word spoken in the past by the holy prophets. That's, of course, in the scriptures and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. And so this command given by Jesus through the apostles, of course, Peter's referring to his own teachings, the teachings of John, the teachings of James, the teachings of Paul and all of the other apostles that have written, Matthew, Mark, etc. And so Peter is um, not only reminding his readers and you as listeners today of his teachings, that they would apply his teachings to wholesome thinking, but he's really encompassing the whole of Scripture, both the Old Covenant, which was existent in Peter's day, and the letters of the apostles that were in circulation and would one day be included in the canon of Scripture. In verse 3, he writes, Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and they'll follow their own evil desires. Now, Peter, remember, this is his last warning to the church, his last instructions. So this is very important. He says that uh, in the last days, in the last days, of course, included Peter's day and our day and all the days until Jesus returns, scoffers will come scoffing, and they will follow their own evil desires. They will say, where is this second coming that Jesus promised? And they'll continue to say, ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. So in other words, in every generation, there will be those that doubt the second coming of Jesus Christ. In every generation, there will be those who make fun and ridicule anything having to do with the reality of Jesus coming back and the people of earth having to give an account to the one who created them the Lord Jesus Christ. But Peter warns that we're not to follow our own evil desires as others do. We're not to be scoffers. We're not to be those who stop believing in the second coming of Christ. We're to anticipate the second coming of Christ with joy and live in such a way as to make uh, sure that we're not embarrassed or ashamed or, God forbid, rejected on that great day because of our evil decisions and our evil desires. The Lord doesn't want anybody to perish without Jesus, and Peter is very explicit about this. In verse 8, he says, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. And so with that last phrase, Peter makes it clear that God's desire is that everybody would come to repentance. He doesn't want anyone to perish without a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter gives us the reference to how long it's been in an interesting way. He says, to the Lord, a thousand years are like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. In other words, the Lord is not bound by time as we are. The Lord is looking at some other metric for his decision for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about God the Father is looking at different data than we are. So he's not slow in keeping his promises about Jesus' return. Uh, Jesus will certainly return in due season when the Father says it's time. For now, he's being very patient with you and very patient with me and very patient with everyone who's still drawing breath on the earth. The Lord desires that none should perish but everyone should come to repentance. And sadly, the Lord does not get his way because he's given us free will. Some people choose not to come to a place of repentance. Some people choose to reject God and ultimately perish. The Lord's free will that he's given to us is something that he himself will not transcend. In other words, he doesn't want anybody to perish, and it's possible for him to make sure that no one does. However, He's given us the free will to choose, to perish, or to submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and live forever. The day of the Lord will one day come as a thief, or unexpectedly, Peter writes. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. And he says, since everything's going to be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? Remember, 
Peter is trying to stimulate us to hold some thinking. He's asking the question, what kind of people should we be since we know that there is a finish line to this life? Either by old age or sickness or disease we perish, or ultimately at the coming of Christ and the renewal of the world, we will all perish and be destroyed in the flesh. But we ought to live holy and godly lives now as we await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we might be prepared for death and we might be prepared for the day of destruction, in which the heavens will be destroyed by fire and the elements will melt with a tremendous heat. Peter writes, In keeping with his promises, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Someone once said, friends, that the ungodly would not be at home in heaven. They choose to be among sinners here on earth, and therefore they would be uncomfortable in heaven if they were allowed admission. They choose unrighteousness, and so they would not enjoy a place where righteousness always dwells and where the lordship of Christ is always preeminent, where holiness is an eternal condition. So we've been forewarned by Peter. He says, live holy, be found spotless and blameless, and at peace with him at the return of the Lord or at your deaths. Peter makes one final endorsement of Scripture, and he refers to his dear brother Paul and Paul's writing as Scriptures. Even at this early point in time, the letters of the apostles, including Paul, were beginning to be received as Holy Scripture, on par with the uh, books of the Old Covenant Scriptures that Peter and Paul initially learned as young men. And so the Bible, 66 books, Old and New Covenant, are all scriptures, wholly inspired from God, teaching us the way to live, blameless and at peace with the Lord. Lord, I pray that we would indeed live holy and godly lives. I pray, Lord, that we would be stimulated to hold some thinking, as Peter wrote. Lord, may we recall the words of Scripture, both Old and New Testament, and learn to live in a way that's not submitted to our evil desires, but to the Lordship of Christ and the Word of God. Lord, we know that you don't want anyone to perish. We pray, God, that our unsaved friends and relatives would come to a place of repentance and salvation this very day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.